Travel Across America with me. We are in the Florida Keys, and we're going to some must-see historical sites. The John Pennekamp Coral Reef State Park. See coral reefs and mangroves. Windley Key Fossil Reef Geological State Park. Look at the coral reefs and look at the history of the cutting of the coral. Simply amazing fossils. And then our target for the day, the southernmost point, Key West. And this is the southernmost, southernmost house in the USA. You might want to try the free audio walking tour. The phone number is on the screen. This is Key West Historic Marker number 27, the Cable Hut. This concrete structure was built on the mainland and transported by Flagler's Railroad to the current location in 1917. Oh, I forgot to tell you that during the construction of the Overseas Railroad, the coral rock of Windley Key was used simply as rock fill extracted by steam shovels. The history there is incredible. I will be doing a great video on Flagler's Railroad, but back to this sign. This concrete structure was built on the mainland and transported by Flagler's Railroad to the current location in 1917. Its purpose was to protect the connection between the landline and the 125 mile long underwater telegraph cable lines linking Key West and Havana, Cuba. The first international phone call was made through similar cables in Key West on Christmas Day, 1900. John W. Atkins called Cuba, and after a long silence, Cuba answered quite simply, I don't understand you. That is so cool, isn't it? Circa 1917. Next to the cable hut, you will find the line to see this buoy at the Conch Republic, the southernmost point in the continental USA. It's 90 miles from Cuba. This is the southernmost inn. They have a vacancy. And this was a very interesting building in that it's made of coral fossils. This is the custom house and courthouse. An amazing structure. Look at the coral in the wall. I'm taking you fun places. Hang on for more. They're historic too. We had lunch at the Two Friends patio. And yes, it's historic because it has been a Key West icon since 1886. That's a long time for a restaurant to be open. It must be good. Oh yeah, we ate there. It certainly was. Please subscribe. Wait till I take you to the harbor and show you things like this Schooner America 2.0. And have you watched the video about the Key Lime? You'll want to watch that. There's so much history around the Key Lime. And why is it called a Key West Key Lime? And are there still Key West Limes? This was the William Curry Warehouse. This commercial brick building was built by William Curry as a bonded tobacco warehouse. Mr. Curry had become Florida's first millionaire through his vast business holdings that supplied the shipwreck and cigar industries. The structure began as an auction location and salvage warehouse for wrecking. By the 1890s, it was converted to store tobacco from Cuba for the burgeoning hand-rolled cigar business in Key West. By 1890, there were nearly 200 cigar factories producing 100 million cigars for export. It is one of the oldest surviving brick buildings in Key West, circa 1878. And this is Key West Historic Marker 124. That means there are a whole lot of markers to read in this town. Please be sure to subscribe and to hit the like button. We found this sign. It's the end of U.S. Highway 1, mile marker 0. And this is in front of a souvenir shop. We went to the one across the street. You see the sign in the back, end of the road? We went there. Across the street from this was the Cape Hook Tree. The Cape Hook Tree is also called the silva tree or silk cotton tree which grow to 40 meters or more that's 130 feet the tree can grow 10 feet taller in a year capox are beautiful trees with wide buttresses at the base and large flattened crowns of leaves and branches the foul smelling flowers have five petals and are white or pink this was one amazing tree we started walking to go see the little white house and came across this building. United States Naval Station, Key West, the Smith Shop for Steam Engineering, also known as the Foundry, built in 1904. Now, Harry S. Truman, Little White House Museum, this way. Enter here, it's open daily, nine to five. Welcome to the Truman Annex. We invite pedestrians and bicyclists to visit our property from eight to six. Vehicular traffic is limited to property owners and their guests. Please enjoy yourself and be respectful of our community. And it is a lovely community with beautiful white and pastel colored homes. And number 59, Truman's Little White House. This house was built for the commanding officer of the Key West Submarine Base, 
but it was President Harry S. Truman's use of the site for working vacations that earned its fame as the Little White House. During Truman's 11 trips here from 1946 through 1953, he negotiated policies ranging from the Marshall Plan and Truman Doctrine, the recognition of Israel, and pinning executive orders governing civil rights. In subsequent years, the building continued to be used by other presidents for work and leisure, circa 1890. This is the State of Florida's Presidential Museum, and it is open for guided tours. But as I've mentioned in a previous video, we had a lot to do and a lot to see, so we didn't go in the house. But we did go to the museum part, and we saw his car. And they also had this map of trees, which was very nice. I see an avocado tree, a coconut palm, a curry tree, a date palm, and a soap berry tree. That would have been fun to take the time to go find each one of the trees. This 1950 Lincoln Cosmopolitan stretch limo is one of nine limousines staged at various cities throughout the United States for use by President Truman. Unlike today, where the presidential motorcade is transported by air as needed, this vehicle was based in Metuchen, New Jersey, and was reserved for the president's use when he was in New York and the surrounding area. The vehicle has a black Landau top, hydraulic windows, intercom system, and no air conditioning. Yikes! The Key West Harry S. Truman Foundation is proud to be the steward of this remarkable piece of Truman history in Key West. And here is a mannequin of Harry S. Truman dressed up as they would be in Key West. The Presidential Museum section of this was excellent. They had several videos running and lots of information. You could spend hours just in this small museum dedicated to Truman. Here is some memorabilia from the 1948 election. World War II and the decision to use the atomic bomb. After surrender did not come, Truman authorized the use of the world's first atomic bomb on Hiroshima, August 6, 1945. A second bomb would follow soon after, falling on Nagasaki, August 9th. Japan surrendered on August 14, 1945, putting an end to the deadliest war in history. And we have been to Wendover, Utah, on the Nevada border, where these deadly bombs took flight. Sadoka Sasuke, a Hiroshima atomic bomb survivor, made paper cranes or orizuru famous worldwide. After surviving the 1945 atomic bomb, she was diagnosed with radiation-induced leukemia. As part of her belief, she folded more than 1,000 cranes with the hope that they would help her recover from this illness. Sadly, she died of leukemia just a few years later. This wreath, made by school children in Hiroshima, was given to the Truman Little White House in May of 2014 by Dr. Kathleen Sullivan and Robert Trinquist. Hibakusha is the Japanese term for an atomic bomb survivor. As I mentioned, other presidents used this site. President Eisenhower used the site in 1956 while recuperating from a heart attack. In 1961, the house was the venue for a summit between President Kennedy and British Prime Minister Harold Macmillan during the Bay of Pigs incident and Kennedy returned in 1962 after the Cuban Missile Crisis. Secretary of State Colin Powell and foreign leaders held an international summit here in 2001. The Little White House was listed on the National Register of Historic Places in 1974. And I wasn't expecting to see this. The birthplace of Pan American World Airways. This building was its first office. On October 28, 1927, Pan American Flight No. 1 taxied down a runway in Key West, bound for Havana. This was the first United States International Air Service in scheduled operation. That is truly amazing. Some of you have never even heard of Pan Am. I flew Pan Am a lot. Great airline. This building was the ticket office for the Pan American Airways. Oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you, this is uh, Historic Marker 125. The airline was founded in 1927 as a mail and passenger service. It operated between Key West, Florida and Havana, Cuba. Pan Am sold its first tickets for what turned out to be the record for the first overwater international flights between the United States and Cuba. It was the principal and largest international air carrier and unofficial flag carrier for the United States from 1927 until its demise in 1991. Wow, that's been a long time since I've flown Pan Am, obviously. Enjoying the experience so far? Please leave a comment below. Have you been to Key West? Do you want to go there? As we strolled along the beautiful streets, we found a few more historical homes. 
the Philip L. Cosgrove House, circa 1872. Captain Cosgrove, Sr. commanded the U.S. Lighthouse tender, Mangrove, the first rescue ship to aid victims of the 1898 explosion of the USS Maine in Havana Harbor. Three generations of the Cosgrove family occupied the house until 1947. Since 1978, it has been a resort. The Cosgrove House reflects Key West's unique conch architectural style and was listed on the National Register of Historic Places as part of the Key West Historic District. Captain Philip Cosgrove purchased this stately home for the price of $1,600 in 1871. You would have to add a lot of zeros these days. This was a prime location with its proximity to the Deepwater Port and in what was then the center of the city. It is believed that the captain's wife Myrtle planted the century-old banyan tree defined by its aerial prop roots in the front yard for shade. The house remained in his family until 1947. Connecticut mariner and wrecker Benjamin Sawyer built the first house on this property by 1844. Much of Key West port business took place in Sawyer's home until completion of the Federal Custom House. Remember I showed you that earlier? That was a massive building, isn't it? Key West native and deputy custom collector William Lau Delaney acquired the property from Sawyer's widow and built this ornate Queen Anne Revival residence by 1906. Again, another home with a rich history. And then there's the Alexander Cruz Julia Gardner house. The cigar industry of Key West dates from 1831. Remember we talked about that and that building of Curry's when the first cigar factory was established. After the 1868 Cuban War of Independence, Key West cigar manufacturing industry boomed, reaching its zenith at the turn of the 20th century. In 1885, Cuban-born Dolores Fernandez de Cruz purchased this corner lot from Bahamian pioneer William Saunders, who lived here from 1850 to 1880. They erected a three-story cigar factory on this site by 1889, providing a business and a residence for the family. This two-and-a-half-story neoclassical home was built on the site circa 1904. The house and lot are significant for their link to the Cuban cigar industry in Key West. Have you told a friend about my channel? If not, why not? I need to double my subscribers really quickly. This is the Tropic Cinema. Love the colors, don't you? Is that Marilyn out front? I think so. This is the adaptive reuse of the historic 1928 McCrory's Department Store by the Key West Film Society. Nice job. Loving the colors. Next, I will be taking you on the Florida Keys Overseas Heritage Trail. And wait till you see what this 1943 means. What is coming soon is an engineering marvel. Be sure to hit the notification bell. Flip-flops on the ground. And classic road trip. Hey, don't forget to watch the video about the key lime. Why do you have a key lime in your pie? Please subscribe.